Hi, this is Noet, and today we are talking about um, Malta temples. We are talking about Hypogeum, Malta underground temple. Uh, this is the second presentation on the hidden secrets of Maltese temples. Um, space, as I said, we are descending into this small Mediterranean island called Malta, Melita, and we are going back in time, we are going into uh, 3500 BC or 4000 BC or 5000 BC and we are looking at the structures, uh, megalithics, that are left for us to see uh, in Malta that are the oldest structures, uh, freestanding structures uh, on Earth. So, um, these structures and their use and the way they are built and the messages that we get through them uh, are giving us an insight about the civilization that has lived uh, in Malta or around Mediterranean or on Earth um, those days, uh, 5,000, 6,000 years from now. Uh, it is interesting that looking at the temples and listening to the messages that temples provide for us, uh, we can link up to all sorts of messages we get from different religions all around the world, uh, giving us a message, giving us an idea that uh, all of them could be linked uh, that all of them come from the same source from the same idea um, and lead to the same back back to the same divine um, Malta temples underground temples so after we have uh, looked into temples and their structure, the way they are built, uh, we will descend into the underground temple. We will descend through the spiral. We will slowly move through the staircase leading down into the center of Earth. Now, uh, William Blake in his uh, in his painting uh, depicts this ladder uh, that through the spiral leads down into the womb of earth um, and we can see in his painting uh, lots of women descending down the staircase um, going in a spiral movement down to the center of earth from heaven to to earth um, and uh, this painting reminded me very much of the picture of um, hypogeum and could have uh, been happening 5,000 years ago. Um, Hypogeum is an amazing structure carved within the stones. Um, amazing uh, uh, number of tons of uh, brick taken out to build uh, this space that is now on almost 500 square um, meters. Um, it is, it goes as deep down as 11 meters and uh, it in a way reflects um, uh, it is a mirror image of the temples that are above the ground uh, descending down into the earth uh, we come across a oracle room and we come across a room called Holy of Holies now um, those two rooms are completely different uh, and they're very distinctively uh, very determined uh, to be uh, in this particular way one uh, uh, resembling the womb, uh, female womb 
and the other one um, having very straight and strong geometrical lines that uh, uh, remind of the of the male aspect, male energy um, that exists within the nature, within the human body as well. Now, within the oracle, we find the creation of spirals, beautiful mystical spiral that we find uh, above the ground as well. <clears throat> And they are, are drawn in red ochre, so we get this wonderful association of that color uh, that is sign for fertility, that is sign of this menstrual cycle of woman that uh, is ready to give birth to a child uh, within the oracle room. Uh, there are different rituals uh, that uh, that took place within the room of Holy of Holies. There are different rituals that took place. Um, we can imagine what were they for and what was happening uh, 5,000 years ago, uh, but uh, uh, what uh, gives us an indication, what gives us a way to focus, what gives us the path to actually direct our meditations and thoughts, um, is the fact that Hypogeum was actually built with the sound in mind. It was built as a ritual seat where the sound um, vibrates in a very particular manner. The sound within the hypogeum, when I was there, when they were doing um, some tests on the um, different vibrations of uh, sounds within the hypogeum, on the vibration of different notes and instruments within the hypogeum, I was sitting in the oracle room meditating, and we were doing some some sophisticating recording on the computer and so so um, uh, two people who were above me some eight meters above me uh, were whispering to each other so they don't disturb the recordings and I could hear every single whisper through the walls the whispers were completely audible eight meters underneath the, the place where the whispers were happening. So these places were built as uh, as a machine, sound machine. If you alter a sound through any of the uh, chambers within the hypogeum, that sound will echo and will become further audible within any of the chambers um, of this underground temple. Now, the sound that vibrates particularly well within hypogeum, that when that sound frequency is struck, uh, you can actually feel the stones shaking, is 111, magic divine 111 hertz, uh, the sound of low male voice, the sound of chanting Om, the sound of Tibetan chants, the sound of chants of Christian mass that you still can uh, hear in its original state um, in the countries like Ethiopia. So that particular sound, the sound of low male voice, um, has been tested and uh, uh, what is remarkable about it is uh, that uh, the effect of that sound on human brain is quite interesting because it shifts uh, the functions of the one side of the brain into the functions of another side of the brain. Inwards, we are going into ourselves to discover the silence that is connection to God. And going outwards 
into the world of manifestation to discover God or divine as transcendent, omnipresent, omnipotent. Uh, so a spiral that uh, connects us to God within and God without. Now, temples and initiations with all these information that we had, we could imagine above the ground um, there, were, there were the temples that are built, oriented towards different um, heavenly bodies, towards the sun and the moon. And that's why during the equinoxes uh, we have the sun rays passing through the particular passages uh, of the temples and sun rays uh, finishing on particular um, ritual stones within the temples. We also have the temple uh, divided into two parts, one that is within the darkness, the second that is within the reflected light light and one that was completely uncovered. So we are mirroring um, this particular path of the spirit descending into the earth uh, uh, to actually um, uh, give a birth to the soul that will come back to the spirit again. Uh, so you can imagine the sp initiates passing between the two spiral columns um, entering into the spiral to descend into the underground uh, becoming the central Axis, becoming the Sushuma in uh, Hindu philosophy, becoming the pillar of consciousness, becoming uh, this uh, um, Kabbalah center to actually uh, uh, be the source uh, to descend into the earth and to reconnect the, the heaven with the earth. Uh, then you can imagine Hypogeum being the magical place of dreams and vision and, and sacred musical practices. And you can imagine priests and priestesses using chanting and uh, deep voice singing and bell ringing and balls singing, balls and drums to actually reach the altar state of consciousness, to heal people, to go into the oracle into the dreams or to conceive children um, you can uh, uh, find these musical rituals later on as I said all around the world uh, within the Christian mass singing uh, Tibetan or Buddhist chanting and within the Hindu devotion songs so Moving through the chambers, we are moving through the light, then we go into the light reflected as the same way the moon reflects the light of the sun. We go into the darkness, um, deeper into ourselves. we go deeper into the earth when the darkness becomes more complete and when we can um, reconnect with the silence. Through the chanting we open to divine, we go into meditation, there are um, different wedding or healing rituals uh, being performed and, uh, and then we also go into the sleeping, we go um, into the dreams, uh, we go into receiving divine guidelines through dreams, um, we go, uh, we become an oracle uh, that through the dreams um, gives the messages to the people about uh, what is the way to, to work, behave, um, govern the country, etc. Uh, this little statue of the goddess uh, was found inside the hypogeum and what is very interesting about it is that uh, uh, Tibetans have a position for um, dying and uh, uh, they also recommend um, that uh, a person lies down on the right on their right side, put the uh, hand underneath the head and then the left 
uh, hand should be uh, put in a particular position. So um, the sleeping lady that was found in Hypogeum 5,500 years uh, completely mirrors uh, the dip. Tibetan dying position or Tibetan position for, uh, recommended for sleep uh, so you could actually uh, come into the contact with your dreams. Uh, so back to the temples and initiation we are looking at this death of old elf re-entering the womb of the earth so the new will be born, uh, whether it is in a completely material form, in the form of a baby being born, or in a spiritual form, in a form of a real human being, uh, uh, with entering the world of dreams, spirits and soul, was something that lived on this little island in the middle of Mediterranean many, many, many years uh, before other uh, temples were built uh, all around the world. Um, and uh, I will finish with um, alchemical vitrio, which actually means uh, uh, visit the interior of the earth. And then through purification you will find a sacred stone. Within the alchemy this sacred stone uh, had a property of transforming any metal into gold. Uh, within uh, within uh, uh, literal interpretation of things, uh, it had the pro it has the property of uh, um, transforming um, our earthly self into our heavenly beings. Um, it has the property of uh, merging our body, soul, and spirit.